Good evening here in Los Angeles. Uh, good morning for those of you over there in China. Um, welcome to this online lecture, uh, our first one of the academic year. It is a true honor and pleasure to welcome Xu Pei uh, to talk to us tonight. Uh, I have the pleasure to know Xu for some time. Um, is is a fantastic opportunity for us um, to think and reflect a lot of many issues that I think is in the imaginary of everybody involved in architecture. Uh, let me let me go through some of the formalities of of, of Shu Shu Pei uh, trajectory. Um, he founded his studio Shu Pei in Beijing in 2005, and from there he has produced an extraordinary corpus of cultural work that have made him one of the leading figures in architecture, not in his generation, I would say, but in any generation. Uh, his work has been exhibited in all over the world, including places like MoMA in New York, the Venice Biennale, the GI Gallery in Japan, the Centre Pompidou, the Victorian Library Museum, um, the Castle Dresden Art Museum, Sao Paulo Arb Arbinal, and with solo shows in AIDA's Harvard University, the Rome Maxi Museum, and so on. His work is part of the permanent collections of the MoMA New York, the, the Center Pompidou in Paris, um, the Victorian Library Museum, and others. Um, he was oh, he was also very active as a jury. He liked to participate and engage in discussion with the, the, the future architecture. He, he was a jury member for the Miss Van der Rohe Award uh, many years ago. And of course, uh, Shu has a long relation with the United States, a, a long relation with the American Academy. Uh, he has taught in Harvard and Columbia, to name a few, as a visiting professor. Um, current dean on the Central Academy of Fine Arts, Art School of, School of Architecture in, in Beijing, which I have the pleasure to visit a couple before the, before the pandemic years. Uh, and it's an extraordinary place, a unique place with a very long tradition and an influential cultural uh, institution in Beijing and in all over Asia. So what I think is super interesting and why I I really wanted, uh, we really wanted to have Shu, Shu with us is because I think his work, it, he sits and operates an extraordinary intersection between tradition and innovation. He's somebody who finds a lot of roots in the work, in, in his culture and, and the traditions of his culture and his country, but at the same time, always looking to innovate, always looking to also to understand what is the cultural context. What are the possibilities of material? How to rethink materials that we know, but making those things in a different way. Uh, I think his work, I find it incredibly poetic and romantic, but at the same time, incredibly provocative and abrasive in a contemporary way. So the work of Shu is a work that is always, I would call it, in a productive tension. It's never one thing or another. Every time that you start to make an assumption that is this, something else reminds you that is, there are other things in play. And I think, to me, is one of the most um, extraordinary gifts that architecture has is this capacity to confuse us about what is the temporality in which that body of work inhabits. So, as I said, it's a very honor and pleasure to have it. Unfortunately, because circumstances is still on the pandemia cloud that is still keep moving around in the world. He couldn't be in person here with us inside in Los Angeles, but we really wanted to hear from him. So, this medium, even not ideal, in the other hand, allows us to reach a larger group of people. And we know that we have people all over the world listening to this talk. So without further ado, I just want to welcome Shupei to Sayak. Hello. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Hernan, for such kind of an introduction. It is a great honor to have a chance to share my work, my thought, my experience with everyone. My topic tonight is root and innovation. Let me share my screen. 
I'm going to focus on one project, which is Imperial Q Museum, to represent my design philosophy. And in, in the last part of my lecture, I will use some image of material and the structure proposition from other projects to explain how my philosophy gets translated across different tectonic terrains. The exhibition of a recent architecture from China and MoMA is so meaningful for the contemporary practice in China after 30 years repeat urbanization, especially under the challenge of the climate change. Martino Steerly, who is a Philip Johnson curator, a chief curator along with his team, through their observation discovered the younger generation of Chinese architects was trying to find a new way to approach contemporary architecture with rich cultural and the material tradition of China. Even each architect had Sorry. Even each other is okay, right? Okay, sorry. Even, you know, each architect have their own style in terms of architecture language, but they strongly share one common interest, which is the ecological and the cultural sustainability. They are designed not contemporary, but also deeply rooted into the traditional Chinese cultural background. The seven architects was select, uh, including myself, uh, my work Imperial Q Museum, also showing and the MoMA. If we try to summarize the char characteristic of uh, traditional Chinese culture, I think about it is art. Chinese culture is culture of uh, art. Confucian side, the beginning in poetry, standing in ceremony and becoming music. The Chinese landscape painting may be a good example to understand artistic spirit in Chinese culture. Those two landscape painting was done by Gao Ke Gong, Yuan Dynasty, they represent the highest achievement in ancient Chinese history. So what we can learn from those paintings or what we inspired by this landscape painting. The first of all, I believe the, the nature attitude is the first strong character. For example, if you look at a painting that's so much dominated by the, by the nature, only little house, the artificial things hiding in behind the landscape. Maybe you see the some fishmen walking around here. So this is a pretty much represent the, the, the Chinese ideology of the unity of the men and nature, one of the Asian Chinese thought. The second is my landscape. This painting is roughly uh, it's not a representation of the nature. They pretty much abstract in a certain way. Uh, the Chinese artists never sit down in front of a mountain to sketch those landscapes. They would like to travel in inside the mountain for many months. Once they came back home, they use brush, ink, quickly to draw. They try to catch up their mood and, uh, and the experience in another way. Uh, this art is more talking about the experience and the perception rather than representation. Uh, Another character is uh, so inspired my work, which is in complete integrity. I consider this painting is uh, so much, you know, for example, they leave a lot of open, right? They, they leave a lot of blank. But the Chinese artists consider blank is gold. Actually, they give you a room. They inviting and welcoming people to create work with artists together. Even today, when we saw this painting, you start to, you know, each individual is going to really follow into the, the creating or imagination. So my design 
philosophy is quite um, inspired by the by the Chinese art and uh, Oriental view of nature. We call and try to find an intelligent way to approach contemporary architecture based on the ecological and the cultural sustainability to respond the very crucial uh, global the climate change definitely also you know regional cultural um, ruptures so my you know this architecture of nature is uh, kind of my the theory or ideology i really want to you know to explore the natural construct principle behind architecture to discover the um, you know to discover the 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 source uh, for example is uh, uh, respond uh, you know uh, for example the the, the challenge uh, especially uh, want to reconstruct the blood relationship among the architecture, people, regional culture, geography, climate, and so on. So two paths, I, you know, whenever I work on the work, I always think about how we rediscover the root based on culture and climate. The architecture is art, I strongly believe this is a, you know, I strongly believe so. So innovation is a became to the, the, the first priority for the architecture. Creating new experience is, is always the, 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 the first thing. So I also try to summarize the, the five points. You know, what, uh, when I think about architecture, I still feel the site and the orientation uh, maybe I use more, uh, uh, really hard to translate from the Chinese term. The site and o orientation not only associates sun, wind, the water or mountain and so on. Actually, this is a deal with the feng shui or more the cultural sense, uh, the, you know, more sustainable the idea. The second point is uh, structure and form. I strongly believe uh, the good architecture should be how you make structure system into, you know, be part of your architectural form. In other way, the, the art or poetic expression of a structure should be is your, the creation process. The sponge architecture is more talking about the uh, prosody, the character, but uh, I would like to use um, this uh, character to represent um, the traditional Chinese architecture. They always, uh, they, they not have very clear in and out. They always create a kind of a corridor pavilion, you know, courtyard, if you look at the Chinese traditional building, they roughly, the, the containment space to like people wandering, you know, inside to hang on, to, you know, to take a break, to very enjoyable the spaces. So sometimes you feel useless, but actually this is can really content the, the, the very rich, the architecture, you know, program. The cave and the nest, this, uh, the so crucial for the, the climate change since um, the architecture should be have a cave and a nest in terms of the, the spatial co you know, quality. Uh, this is also indicate Chinese yin yang. So in, in order to they can have uh, some um, the balance in, you know, for the, for the sometimes space is closed, sometimes open. So we can inspired by the by the lot of the, the Asian architecture, for example, the China, uh, like Shanxi province, they have some uh, the the cave right above, you know, basically above the cliff. So they live in cave, but they also built wood structure right on the front. So you're going to discover this is a so intelligent idea. So they can make 
the cave and the nest in terms of the temperature light uh, somehow to transform. Uh, they can balance the, you know, all those things. Last, the point is, uh, I just mentioned before, in, in complete integrity. This is really uh, be part of my work. I consider architecture, even you finish the construction, this is a, you cannot be built, you know, completely complete. You have to leave some room in terms of the form, space, content to let people to really engage in terms of the activities. Um, so from there, maybe I'm going to use one example and also the few the, the project I'm working on, try to uh, demonstrate the architecture of the nature, which is my design philosophy, and also the, the five points I just mentioned before. The first project is uh, Imperial Q Museum. Uh, this shop probably you can get a sense people standing on the relic park uh, of the Imperial Q ruin side. So through the, this view, you can get a sense about uh, today's urban setting. Jing uh, used to be personally in the capital in the, in the war. During the Ming and the Qing dynasty, they export a huge amount of porcelain to the Europe. So this is like greenish, the white porcelain, like Song dynasty. This is a Yuan, Yuan dynasty, blue and white porcelain. This is Ming dynasty, Dou Cai, uh, more represent colorful, you know, white porcelain with uh, some color. So you can see from Song, Yuan, Ming, and the three, the, the dynasty, they produced highest achieve, achievement uh, in the Chinese porcelain history. Star Ming Dynasty, the Jing De Zhen became to the imperial king to produce porcelain for the imperial family. So this is a satellite photo for the today's Jing De Zhen. Uh, for the historical town, they used to be here. But this is a way, you know, farmland and the landscape. They used to have a lot of hill water. This is a major river goes south north, uh, passing through the city. This is the west boundary of the old town. The Jing De Zhen is not like a planning, the not planned the city. They more growing naturally in terms of the, based on the 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 personally in industrial. They start from south, further south, Sanbao is the Song Dynasty. This location called Luo Ma Qiao, which is a Yuan Dynasty, La De Kium is a, based on here. And then this is a current old town, is a, you know, start from Ming Dynasty, Imperial Q. The, the, the site is here. This is our museum site. So if you close up this urban, the setting or urban fabric, you can see quite interesting uh, the, the, the texture. For example, small alley always go to uh, perpendicular with this big river in order so they can transform the product into the river. They bring the the soil wood back to the, you know, the city and the kiln. And then the big street always parallel, go north, south, uh, the city in order to they bring the market, you know, the uh, everything trading, uh, the shopping street on this way. So this is a, one of the typical alley. You can see it's quite a narrow with a roof overhead. Jing De Zhen be part of, um, you know, South, part of China. It's quite human. It's a sort of a tropical, the climate that is so hot in summer, very cold in winter, even snowing in winter. So the, the hot weather and the more rain in the summer. So this is a narrow the valley provide a comfort the condition, for example, most of the time in the noon, they 
the under the shed, you know, under the shadow. For example, like a roof overhang, people in and out from here. Uh, you can feel the very comfortable. This create um, sustainable the the interesting the phenomenon, which is I call the wind tunnel. Wind always concentrate this small alley, but this small alley also bring into the each individual housing. It's a housing surrounding with a few. The vertical courtyard like this, this building very enclosed from outside, but inside is like a vertical, like a, like a, you know, courtyard typology. Um, so they also create interesting the 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 phenomena which is like a chimney, a chimney. I you know the I the the phenomena. They can bring the hot air to go up, and uh, so this is an early development uh, of the city. Actually, based on the the cube complex, uh, which including the one brick cube. You can see this is a very typical the the brick cube and the workshop and uh, also housing nearby. This is a, like a seal of the city. So if you walk through the, the, the old town city, sometimes you always saw the, the chimney behind you know, housing, which is a lot of private um, the brick kiln surrounding the imperial kiln. And uh, this is a restoration. When I work on this design, I just, uh, you know, wandering in the old town. One day I discovered some um, craftsmen making the, their brick kilns. Scaffolding, the craftsmen just sitting there, they just, uh, you know, control the in general the shape. So how you can, you know, based on the, uh, the big break, they make the base. This base already there, but uh, beyond this point, this like brick shell is uh, they going to demolish every few years in terms of the demo requirement. Since this uh, the break uh, is the last, uh, you know, the insulation the character. So this video. Is uh, I I try to catch up how people. It's quite interesting. Is uh, this uh, when they making this brick cube? They use their finger, and uh, they cutting through this uh, organic the the form into the you know cross section. One layer of the brick is uh, one section. They trans you know translate complicate the the form into the two dimensional. Um, so, like those, the kiln always have some uh, wood structure to cover in order to they can uh, protect from the rain and uh, so on. So, like those scenario, for example, when we see this uh, the the kiln surrounding uh, like a wood structure, a lot of people is working here. You know, sometime in winter. Very cold in Jingdezhen, the small school, uh, like a, like like a kindy garden or or me, uh, or you know school student can be gathering here. Actually, school is adjacent to the kiln in order to take advantage from the heat. And sometimes the student also stolen one break. Uh, this is a called the, the this break is more like a. Uh, temporary living there in order to they adjust the balance. When you're burning this, uh, the brick kiln, they, they have some tension. They want to use the brick to balance in order to, to, to keep this uh, structure stable. And then some students just stolen the one brick, put in the school bag. They can keep it, you know, whole day warm. In other way, this uh, kiln, not only they're doing their the person in work daily, but also they be part of their life. The people always 
getting here, a lot of meeting going on, social and so on, play. This is a break. Uh, you can feel the strongly, the, the you know, when, when you saw this housing, you, you feel the, the, the whole world built based on the recycle break. This is one, now as a Jing uh, Dezhen tradition thinks uh, the brick kiln going to always uh, demolish, right? Every few years, so a lot of the, the break with the, we call the glazed break, they mix with new break together. They build housing, they build street and, and so on. Whole construction for the city just based on the recycled break idea. This is our side, actually surrounding more complicated urban uh, the fabric. This is like old housing. If you go beyond, this is a housing always including the uh, lot of kiln. Uh, the current day, we have a lot of ruin side for the, this side, this side. Uh, this is a imperial kiln used to be here. Right now, it's nothing above the ground. Is everything underneath? This is like a social housing built in early of ninety, and and so on. And also beyond is a lot of factory built um, after nineteen forty nine. So this is after uh, we realized our design. So you can get sense about how this uh, the overall the. Um, the museum is it, not trying to use a huge, clear uh, the definition about uh, you know their boundary. They they play the zigzag shape in order to the weaving with the surrounding the, the urban fabric. You also can get a sense this is, can be really the sustainable the idea like. Uh, uh, I mentioned before, this is each the brick kiln can be the wind tunnel and so on. So this is a after we build. In the beginning, when I think about this concept, I really want to create a kind of an experience among the people, the museum, and the porcelain. Things personally never too big. This museum is like a big museum just to only show, show the, the excavated from the Imperial Kiln ruin part. So I, you know, first idea, I just feel how I can catch up this sense of uh, the blood relationship among the people, the, the Kiln and, uh, and the person and so on. So the, this is an initial sketch is to represent my the, the intention the think about structure form and architectural form. Now the idea, like what I mentioned, the root uh, is associated with climate. Uh, each the kiln more like the wind tunnel, like you know, catch up the south 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 wind. In the uh, in the summer, the major wind orientation from the south. And also the the building overall this uh, uh, this wallet is a kind of layout from based on the uh, north south orientation in order to against the east west sun open south north to bring the wind into the museum and uh, plus the the five vertical courtyard. So this uh, horizontal internal and uh, vertical courtyard can produce the chimney uh, effect to make this building overall three dimensional. The the wind is you know insulate uh, installation. So this is a the kind of a too strong idea is uh, the blood relationship with the people. Break kiln, the person and another is uh, like wind or climate idea. So this is after we are finished uh, 
the 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 concept design. You can see the surrounding historic housing factory and the social housing. It's very complicated. The site, since this building, you also can feel they roughly is the layout. You know, it's not hundred percent perpen uh, parallel each other or perpendicular. So they somehow to adjust, make this uh, the building. Uh, more intimate scale. You can see this is from small scale housing to the big scale the factory. So this museum somehow in between. The, the major the exhibition the space under the ground. So in order to we can keep this museum above ground is more horizontal, uh, more you know the the layout on the on the ground. So you can see, like I mentioned before, the incomplete integrity uh, associates this uh, the in and out shape in order to this all the, the existing the housing or fabric can be, you know, integrate each other. Not only this form, but also like space. We would like to make uh, open to bring the, the light, natural light, wind, sun, and also the activity eh, as well. So this picture showing our design process. The, in our design tradition, I always you know, ask our team to use hand to make a model instead of 3D printing. Uh, for this specific, the design is quite challenging in terms of the form. You can see this is a like more you know more the ten the vault structure. Uh, if you compare, you know they wear it in different size, different curvature. Even each the structure, they also play this you know the variation. Um, the the this uh, radius or coverage and so on. So once we can use hand to build this uh, model, we are going to confident we can really to make this design into the system in terms of construction and the design. So through this detail, you can look at this is a horizontal, more cross section. Each piece is like a like 1.5 meters wide. This is a somehow similar with a craftsman when they making the traditional brick kiln. So also cutting the sections through the, you know, this is a, this way. Um, that's also gave us a lot of the, the inspiration, you know, later on when they develop some uh, construction process. The model always build bigger, bigger. This is our the, the, the design process. Sometimes computer really plays, you know, to the people. You know, when they see, for example, when they through the computer, when they see this interior, sometimes if this is too dark, they give it much lighter. If this is a you know uh, uh, really uh, really bright and they they getting readjust so they please you and also we feel very hard to get sense through the computer to to realize what's what is really scale what's the body what's the people's body relation with uh, our design so this is a kind of our process is a bob model is make made in Different partial model, you know, different scale, different way. This is a wood, you know, partial model, and also definitely this is not a design process. This is more like a, like a art piece of uh, we did for the for the, this uh, like porcelain, you know, art product. So through the those things, you can get a sense or design process. We not only through the idea, we 
we discover the root in terms of cultural and the climate. But also when we work on the, the Pacific, the, 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 the design, the process, we also inspired by how tradition no way to kind of associate or contemporary design. This is a set plan. The surrounding, uh, this is like an open view. Most of people are going to walk through this uh, open view, relic park, and then flow into the, this building. Uh, we can see this is a, the factory site and uh, surrounding this area, we have also created kind of a, the, the water garden and so on. So this is a, the, you know, the perspective showing how people, you know, walk, wandering this open space, go underneath the green canopy to get on the bridge, passing through the water, flow into the, the foyer of the museum. So this is a, the, the how people experience. For example, this is a, the ground level is major, the permanent exhibition. People are going to come through here and then concentrate, go downstairs. And then you continue your, your, your you, you know, the circulation. And then you can from here, go on the stair back to the level. And the same moment, we have a temporary exhibition. We have a different foyer. People can be come to here and then go down to this temporary exhibition program. But sometimes this wall have the door, sliding door, they can connect together this permanent, uh, you know, temporary, they can, can be uh, integrated together. And the same moment we have office entrance, we have a loading backside the truck can go here back into the, the loading deck and then they close the door. On the front, when people passing through this water garden, you're going to see somehow to see the, you know, more like a semi outdoor under the, 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 those walled structure. For example, they pretty much front of uh, this museum. This is a lecture hall. They can connect through the foyer, connect, you know, overall exhibition, uh, but also they can totally open to the public. Those parts, even the museum is closed. They also can open to public. So this, the ruin, the site is uh, after we start construction, we realize we, we, we discovered a lot of, you know, the, the, the ruin. And then we change our design to create the one amphitheater, theme outdoor exhibition. And then they also located in different high. So now the, the, the interesting idea, I really want to make basement level more light, more ventilate. For example, we have one, two, three, four, five sunken courtyard. The people always, even you go down to basement, you always see the bamboo courtyard. And once you walk into this courtyard, the office working process also bring into the the overall exhibition circulation. For example, you can see people working here and also working here. Things you know, museum people always restored the the the, the porcelain, you know, uh, uh, product and so on. And uh, so this is a uh, uh, in general circulation. We can see this is a section. In the beginning, uh, we think about the structure, how we built this very complicated the, the design. The first of all, this in general, the, the wall structure is made by two layer of brick pour the, the concrete in between. So this is more like a sandwich, uh, the things more uh, also like uh, the 
the Roman time, right, when they build huge arch, they also use the first layer brick or stone, second layer concrete, the finished layer, they use stone or brick. So this is kind of a similar things. Uh, in the beginning, we try to use purely brick vault structure, but this is uh, never the work in terms of earthquake. And also for the Chinese code, they not allow you to use purely brick. I think this is a technical part, but in terms of the, the tectonic consideration, I also feel from today, if we still insist use uh, the brick to achieve this, uh, uh, use purely brick structure to achieve this vault structure, it's kind of a doesn't make sense since you're going to make huge effort, you know, to, to achieve stable safety the requirement. But uh, somehow this idea is against uh, the, the nature of a tectonic. So this is uh, like our, our detail. You can see the section uh, is, uh, this is a concrete ceiling. We created roughly high, uh, you know, the, the, the space. This is a lot of the equipment the people can underneath climbing inside. For example, when we doing some special exhibition, we have to let people go underneath, maybe to make hole, to make some connection. In general, the base, uh, you know, the floor is like uh, the equipment. Uh, but that, uh, you know, to, to totally like or structure release without major uh, mechanical things. So this is our typical after construction. This is a basement. Uh, you can see this break. We collect a lot of the, the old kiln break. This is a, a break is into the, the fragment piece, the glaze that you can see. This is a, it's really hard to know. This is a from Ming Qing or Yuan, even Song Dynasty. Things a lot of this recycled brick we collect is not only from the kiln, but also from the housing. The housing sometimes they rebuild, they go, they hate this uh, the material, they're going to throw it away. But uh, those housing maybe they use brick many, many years ago. So this is our the 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 process the the final layer for the for the misery the break uh, wall so this is talking about how we achieved the complicated construction uh, into the much simple construction process uh, we develop a way for manufacture like this is a the scaffolding this is folding scaffolding is a metal. They also have a lot of, uh, I call it like 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 a, a small rod to you know uh, can be extend uh, really adjustable a uh, lot of metal rod to 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 control uh, this uh, the soft the the formwork. For example, this is a wood form. It's a kind of a soft, very soft, uh, in order to we can make this uh, the curvature. And the same moment, you can see underneath we have one track. Whole scaffolding can be moving when they build piece piece one point five meters wide, and then they're going to moving. So this is our construction. Some part, most of part. Uh, like this arch, we do in a few times. Really, really hard to <clears throat> to we have to to invite a lot of the brick, uh, the kiln, the craftsman people to make this complicated double curving arch uh, work. So this is our after build. You can see um, beyond the uh, this. Uh, this museum, you can see a lot of housing or chimney, the factory in front of, uh, this is a, like a relic 
park, open field. We have gravel, uh, gravel the uh, gravel, the the plaza, and also water garden. So this is when you walk around this plaza, you can also feel the you know underneath your foot, you can produce a lot of sounds, and water also give you the the sense about Jiangxi, the Jingdezhen is a bamboo, uh, definitely this factory in beyond. You can see this big, the, the vault structure is showing so much detail about, um, you know, break. The, the beyond bamboo, the water sound, water garden, you, you know, those in general, um, the, the, the involvement to create this very special atmosphere, more like Jiangxi, to remind you the, in the tropical area. This water garden is, uh, we lay out a lot of stone. So look at this point, more like uh, the fish group, right? School of the fish is uh, swimming underneath the water, but sometimes they pop out. Uh, only few piece pop out. This also gave you uh, some uh, more life associates uh, with this, those water gardens. So when you approach this museum, you not only get a sense about <clears throat> those tropic, tropical the climate, bamboo sound, but you also get a sense Okay, this museum is uh, more transparent. We create a lot of space along the, the, the outside of the museum is a more semi the outdoor space. Only the cover create a shade, but the wind can totally concentrate. This photo I took, I like this very much to clear showing the, our structure and the material proposition and also how you transform the concrete, the, the column beam to support your, uh, this arch, the stand, standard structure. And the same moment, the kind of poetic, the, the sense of feeling to bring this museum into the associates of porcelain, for example, like the scale, the brick material, the vault structure and so on. Once you walk in, this is our major foyer, the, the, the space, pe most people are going to flow into the here. And then you look at the north, you're going to see the, the, the window, right, open, but uh, most of the west east side going to the, the vault structure. And another tension they made is, uh, this is a transparent glass case. It's so, you know, the light to make a contract, make an interesting uh, tension between the rough structure, the brick, and also the concrete, uh, and also stone and the concrete, the material. So this gave you somehow the, the traditional the cube, the feeling, but uh, absolutely it's very different. It's never, you know, cube never, brick cube never have this so, you know, transparent and also put everything together. So when you're looking south, you can see the, the detail of the design, the wood, the frame with a lot of open window. This is a, you can control this window open most of the time. The, the wind can be bring in to concentrate this, uh, I call it, you know, wind turnal. So this is also the spatial character from one space go to second one and then go beyond. The space always flow. It's encouraging people from one place into another. Light uh, also always into this museum. Since uh, this museum is not art museum, this is uh, like a themed personal museum. Personally, like natural light. It's not like artwork, have to avoid natural light. Personally, is never fear about humanity. They also like 
you know, the, the ventilation and so on. So when you found the interior foyer, and then you push the transparency glass door, you go to the second the gallery, which is semi order You're going to see the, you know, down below they have uh, our ruin, which is, um, uh, we found out after construction, how we, you know, make effort to integrate. Look at this, uh, the, I, Sometimes I really moved by this architecture, you know, this break, you know, the material structure, and uh, they create a kind of a relationship with body, with the uh, people's activity. Uh, this is when you go down to the, the ruin side, the concrete, the very light transparent glass, you, you see through this museum you see the beyond sky you see the basement level uh also you see through for example when you're standing on the this side you also can you know look at uh, the the basement level exhibition and then give you some uh, the indication how you can flow from one place to another and uh, we're reaching of the scale, we're reaching of the lightness of the museum also create uh, the motivation to encourage people wandering inside. It, it, it's not just very rush. Uh, it, it's uh, hopefully, you know, encourage people stay hang on to very enjoying the museum, enjoying the the, the relationship. Uh, this is from amphitheater to look at the ruin, look through the semi outdoor the gallery and then see beyond the museum, sunken courtyard and, and then the urban surrounding. Um, once you're finished this, uh, you can hang on surrounding. So this is a, like, a, I call sponge architecture. It's more like Chinese term and the uh, porosity character to give this museum to you can feel people wandering, looking down, go through the amphitheater, you can to go to another one. When people moving more like music, I consider the, the architecture should be, you know, flowing of the music. It, it's, it's not a frozen music, it's a flowing in music, encouraging people to 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 hang on to walk around. So this is courtyard you can see from the from the you know from the ruin side and the theater you you can go down to the courtyard. Once again, once you're from from semi outdoor gallery into the Nazi indoor gallery. So you can see the, the very subtle concrete the stair bring you go down. You're going to see the downstairs. Definitely also can go beyond. So when you turn, you take on the, the, the stair is uh, stepping down. You're going to see, always see the, the courtyard beyond. So you're going to reduce the, the underground, the, the sense of a feeling. So this is when they make an opening, a lot of people, I really love this, uh, like you can see the people going, follow your spatial indication, people naturally go down to walk through, to go basement level. So you can see this is a, or transparency, the, the glass case, you can see this curling looks like, you know, covered people, the rough concrete you can see is, is the ceiling, but that's also refer the ceiling. When we pour this concrete, we meet the raining season every time, you know. So it's very difficult for the for the for the concrete uh, the, the construction. For example, you can see a lot of water. Uh, the, the mark still 
stay on the concrete uh, seating. But I feel this is okay. This is more like a reality. You know, you have to deal with this. Um, not so interesting uh, or experience and the discovery, how we can make or work. For example, this exhibition, the products can be work with our architecture. Since uh, this is a break, this is very different with a typical the museum, the vertical wall, white wall, and then all the things, glass case. Most is against the, the wall. So you only can see the, the porcelain from maybe 100, 100 degree. But we would like to, to, to make this, uh, you know, the porcelain people can see from top, bottom, things are very transparent button. And you can surrounding this glass case to see 300 degree. I believe this is a exactly porcelain product they want, you know, how they present themselves. Natural light is also the strong the idea to provide for this museum. You can see only this part without the window, but we have skylight. Bring down, this is a, I just mentioned before, this door going to sometime open. They're going to bring contemporary exhibition with permanent exhibition together. And um, our glass case somehow freestanding. It's not really a touched wall. And uh, things are the, the form inside, the, this form is, is like a fish belly, and then we use fish bone to organize this uh, the glass case. So basically people going to walk is not just the smooth circulation, they need a turn around. This is one courtyard I mentioned. I, I really enjoy those courtyards, especially during the rainy season, uh, the water going to Heating on the bamboo to create kind of a Jiangxi the atmosphere. You, you're going to see beyond the, the museum people working. You're going to see bamboo sky. The, each courtyard has a very different scale. Some, some courtyard roughly bigger. This is really the small. The, the tea room above, you also can look down inside the museum. We stand in front of a multifunction, the, the room. So this is a, the people kind of enjoying the activity inside. This is a, after you almost finish your, your permanent circulation, you're going to hang on this courtyard to see the, um, you know, some stone base, actually it's the foundation uh, when we work on this project, excavated from this Pacific side from Ming Dynasty. And then this is the last moment when people walk you know, almost finish their permanent circulation, you're going to see one stair. They're going to attract you stamping on, stepping on to, to go up. Since this is like an atrium, when you're standing here, you also can, can realize above have some exhibition. So use light, use stair, um, use, uh, you know, space. We, we try to create a kind of a flow uh, the the experience for the for the people. Definitely, the one thing I also more want to emphasize, like uh, in Jingdezhen, there's another ceramic museum. So this this museum they built based on the you know they not built for the for the person. They built for the aircraft. It's like huge box, high ceiling, dark box, many artificial lights. You, you know, you can show on, uh, you can expect aircraft, car, only you cannot present personally. I feel somehow disconnect the people, the contents with the architecture. So this building, this museum is really want to catch up the, uh, the relationship among the people, the structure and the contents was exhibit. 
So when you step up, you're going to, you know, the stair also interests. We never doing the stair is like people to see the whole thing. Somehow one, you know, stair show one play located behind the wall, somehow behind. So this is a, when you get on the, in the middle of the level, you're going to see the, the, the natural light. And then this is so much, you know, represent or idea. This is the you. Uh, this is a recycled break with new break uh, to mix together to create this uh, vault structure. And then natural light going to brush on the, this rough structure. When people by and forth they stare, you're going. You, you must be going to uh, use your hand to a uh, touch. So this touch, uh, you know, uh, is not only visually, you can feel the... Okay, sorry, maybe we, we lost, we, we disconnect. Uh, okay, right now we're back, right? Okay, all right. Okay, maybe right like this slide. Okay, no, you are not teaching me. I was at that. Okay, so we back the foyer of the uh the the museum, and then you're going to see the okay the small lobby or foyer for the lecture hall. So people can also from the outside of the museum to connect. Once you walk in, this is lecture hall is covered covered by one vault structure. We have a horizontal cut exactly right on the ground level, you know, uh, horizontal, a uh, horizon line. And then we also have gap, uh, you know, vertical. So this make quite interesting. Even this top light, most of, you can see this is a mo most is a natural light mixed with artificial light to indicate or represent a traditional brick kiln. They also have observation hold right on above. So this is a, when we have the seminar, the meeting. So this, what I really want to see the atmosphere like this, you know, building incomplete, but we waiting for the interesting activity. So this is a, is a tea room. Uh, we make a horizontal cut. It's more like a, like a Chinese, you know, scroll painting. Is uh, things uh, once you standing on here, they are going to force your seat down in order to you see see through this uh, horizontal cut because the ruin talking about uh, underneath the earth. So once you're sitting here. You can see through beyond the ruin park, Imperial ruin park. Front of the water have some intermediate way to protect, uh, you know, not allow people to access from the, this uh, the out, the semi outdoor space. So see the, you know, how people to interpret it, to use this space, Tirong. When we have activity, how people were enjoying the in summer, semi outdoor outside is raining, but if people can stay covered, but still outdoor. And uh, we have a lot of activity going on, just, you know, exactly like this museum, really will come in people to, to enjoy. This is a, like a transparent sponge. So, you know, from the south to see beyond the housing and the residential and the front of the vertical, the courtyard. So this going, you know, pretty much we walk around this museum and then we have uh, the, the video can bring, you know, we wandering through this museum. So beyond the river, the factory,
Okay, I'm going to use another 10 minutes very quickly to, to go through the rest of uh, our design. This is, uh, I would like to show the Ma Jia Yao Ruin the Museum and uh, Observatory. This is located in Gansu, very far south in the northwest part of China. It's uh, the surrounding geography is like uh, the lowest, the pastel, you know, uh, so this location, so this is all, we're, we're going to work on two projects. It's one is we call the uh, observatory, the other one is ruin museum. This is a ruin, it's a, a prehistory, you know, prehistorical, the plot, uh, plot ruin site. So you can see this is a ruin site. Uh, this is a local geography. It's quite interesting. This is a Taohe. It's a big river. And then this is like white land. And then we have uh, the, the canyon just perpendicular with this river. And then geography, the site is more like a platform, you know, like uh, the one terrace in Tunaza. The ruin side exactly located in between. It's not on the top. It also not in the bottom. This is also re reflecting the, the, or, you know, the ancestor people, the survival vessel. So this is a, the, we're going to make a, um, the, the observation building is here. So you can see this is general. This is our the model. You can see the big canyon crossing through here. This is a ruin. I believe through this model, uh, I really want to catch up the sense about uh, the where the pottery come from. So I believe this is uh, like uh, the yellow soil and uh, during the thunderstorm raining and the bird burning the forest. And then later on, people discovered the, the, the fire, the, the, the yet, you know, like those soil, it came to the, the, the piece of a pottery. So this is a kind of, a, we really want to represent, you know, really want to catch up this route. So this is two buildings. One is somehow hiding behind the earth. Another one is somehow sunken into the, the land. So the first building, uh, observation building, you can see we just one horizontal cut reflecting the, the layer of the soil. You know, this is uh, uh, the, the lowest plateau is uh, kind of uh, very flexible. You can always carve out local people. They, you know, they some, sometimes live in the cave inside of uh, the wood structure building. So this observation building, we just hiding somehow under earth, people use the ramp slowing flow into the underneath. You can see this is like our horizontal cut. People can look the, 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 the historical, the ruin side. So this is a, what we try to do. Above the ground, we only use a, kind of a primitive the structure to, to, to reflecting the, you know, prehistorical, uh, maybe the, the, the architecture or survival. So we also carve a lot of cave, you know, for the mechanical, for the observation deck, people standing up, also standing on the terrace, uh, you know, uh, this horizontal cut to see through, to see the, the, you know, the, the, the ruin, the, the part. So this is a very good photo to showing our concept since uh, the, the natural side is really flat and then we just making horizontal cut. Very minimum, very control, uh, very horizontal, like a screen, Chinese screen painting. For example, this scale, the, the model also have very big scale. You can see we, we start testing the, uh, the, the exactly the geography, how this building to, to integrate 
you know, or existing the yellow soil. This is a Lois Plateau kind of uh, things. So you can see the, the people, you know, scale with this model. So this is a, the plan, basically the structure. I always try to avoid column B. I, I just feel strongly feel this is not, a, you know, the, the perfect showing the character of a structure and the material. So we just use the three major, the, 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 we call the two, you know, the, the structure and then concrete slab, the few, the wall to support a lot of, you know, shade wall surrounding. So overall co construction going to the only open the central part and then those things going to cover out. So in order to, to, to preserve existing soil condition. So this is a, like a stair ramp. This is horizontal cast. Uh, the museum is also like a, what I mentioned. This is a typical the cave and the nest combination. And uh, this curvature, the, like a shell, more like a piece of pottery to against the north, uh, south, uh, northwest wind. Since north wind is very cold local in winter, the kind of a desert. So this museum is uh, somehow very horizontal sunken into the earth above ground very minimum high this is a this is a facing the north this is facing south nest the cave going to make you know the overall building very sustainable they can provide comfort the temperature exchange the big idea is encouraging people flow from the front plaza and then they take a run. This is just one run to go through everything. Eventually they come out from the museum and then they crossing to, you know, to here and then they go a little bit up to the ruin museum. So this is zigzag, the shape, the circulation is a kind of, if we think about, you know, you know, like, a, the, the pre uh, historical people, how they making collect the water from the creek, they, they making the, the plot. They just, uh, you know, use a zigzag shape to climbing the mountain up and down to the river. So this museum catch up this experience. They also use the primitive, the cave and the nest. Uh, the, 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 you know, this is a piece of arch upside down more like a big beam. So this is a cross section showing the cave and the nest. This is a plan and this section. So this is the inside. The, we have a two level exhibition gallery under the uh, actually inside nest. This is more cave part. Since the local, they have a lot of cave. Um, so this, this is in between, you know, two to shell, we create a secondary exhibition circulation. People can walk through, you know, climbing up and then go to the, go to the run. So tectonic, uh, actually I want to use uh, more structure and the material proposition, maybe very quickly to show, for example, this structure, I inspired by tent, basically concrete, the very thin concrete uh, double curving roof somehow to pull by the concrete shade wall and then some color. So, so if we ignore this partition wall, this, this whole building uh, is like, uh, you know, the, the structure, tennis structure. Uh, this is one thing I really want to make uh, you, you know, artistic expression about the structure, material. And the second one is more like a, the Shu Yuan is a Chinese, called the Chinese Academy to learn surrounding some house. This is a local. Local, they use uh, the stone to making the wall. It's a things a lot of mountain hill. This is pretty much their, you know, tectonic culture. 
And then those wall, you can see this wall somehow to set back from the roof edge in order to we create some overhead to protect the rain and sun. This is a full, you know, gallery. The roof, some part is connect, some part independent. It's very different with the traditional Chinese I call Shu Yuan, but they still catch up the the sense is one central courtyard surrounding with gallery. So once you walk interior, you can feel the tension, the, the horizontal floor, very clean. And then roof somehow was, you know, inward based on the gravity to create this tent, you know, tension of a double curving roof. So this is a lecture hall. You can see this is a shade wall, bring the roof together. Beyond, you can see this column, right? Actually, this wall is more like a, like a partition, the, the masonry, the, the stone wall, but inside the column, uh, in between the roof and the wall, we leave some gap to showing this tectonic idea. So this is a concrete. The concrete is there. You, you can see the combination about uh, you know material and the detail, uh, the window, this uh, concrete um, you know little beam, the gap, the roof. You feel the roof going to continue the flow inside, and also some window. You can see this is a kind of a Chinese garden. We use a window to catch up some beautiful moment, and definitely this building is give you the sense or give give you the pressure when you walk in inside the building you feel okay this this structure was pulled by the, the roof you always feel the structure going to falling down but in reality not so you create kind of a tension more poetic more the tension now so one is similar to this is we use purely concrete this is also in Jingdezhen. it's very tropical area the idea is uh, like create a, like a early village settlement uh, sitting inside of the valley. And uh, the structure is somehow just to use an uh, arch concrete roof, use some wall to support. But this is a purely structure, almost, almost nothing else. Everything exposure outside, outside. this is a concrete curving roof, concrete, which has made a difference, the, the texture because difference uh, technique when you pour this roof and uh, this wall. So you can see this, uh, the, the whole building, a lot of overhand, this is represent the local climate, a lot of raining uh, in, in Jingdezhen and a lot of balcony overhand. Uh, this is, you know, never have the column beam is transformed the, 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 the arch and the wall into the structure system. You can see this is a clear showing the, the roof. I always interesting about how we can the, the deal with roof. Things roof associates sky, associates light, associates safety for the people. So how you can really to use roof to create a lot of, you know, like a porosity quality of the space. So you can see a lot of indoor, outdoor, somehow in between. This overall building is uh, like an imperial kiln, you, you know, building. Uh, it's a lot of this kind of space. Uh, one thing I really want to emphasize for the Imperial Q Museum is very successful in terms of the temperature. So even in hot summer, the whole building without any air conditioning. So, so this is what I'm very proud of in terms of the sustainable issue. So you can see beyond the roof, right? So building a lot of outdoor space, the corridor, people hanging around, it, because the program is major for the for the people living here, uh, and also like a guest room and the major is a conference room. 
idea I really want, bring the natural light into the conference room. Thinks that most of the conference rooms is going to dark, black, but inside of this building, everything is natural light. So because of the time, I, I feel I have to stop my lecture. Uh, thank you, everybody. Pay attention to listening. Thank you. Thank you, Shu. Thank you, Shu Pei, Thanks. for a terrific lecture. Um, we, on behalf of Saya, thank you for tonight, and I'll see you in a minute in the Q&A part of it. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everybody.